welcome everyone. We are delighted tonight to be launching the next gen technological removals facility here in Davos. And with us we have an esteemed panel uh, of speakers, um, including uh, representatives of the founding buyers of the next gen uh, facility, as well as uh, a representative of the US State Department who will be arriving a little bit later. My name is Isabel Hargbrink, I'm the head of communications at South Pole. Our um, moderator is lost in the rain. So the second, <laughs> the second she arrives, Nancy Gillis from the First Movers Coalition, she will take my place. Uh, in the meantime, uh, Renat, my, my boss, I would like to ask you, Renat, um, this, the, this removal, uh, this technological removal facility is, is rather novel. Uh, what is the background? When did it all start? How did this conversation start? And why is it important? Why is it different from everything else we've done at South Pole to date? Sure. So first of all, also from my side, very warm welcome uh, to Davos, to this event. And many thanks for showing interest in the topic of carbon removals. And a specific thanks, of course, goes to our buyers who have committed to go this journey with us. We'll talk about that in a second. And of course, also big, big thanks to our team, um, specifically uh, you, Isabel, for hosting the event, but of course also Philip and Patrick, um, who have led this um, uh, facility, the build of this facility for us, together with Mitsubishi. So, removals. Why, where's that coming from, right? So the company South Pole, we, we go back quite a while, already 16 years ago, we have uh, started our first projects. In the meantime, it's nearly 1,000 projects. I'm happy to see also Martin from the Gold Standard here. We're still a big supporter um, of Gold Standard, having a lot of Gold Standard projects. But in the past, most projects to reduce carbon emissions were in the space of avoiding carbon. Now we all need avoiding carbon is very important. It's perhaps even the most important thing to do also according to IPCC. But IPCC also says that even if we decarbonize in line with science, we are still not going to meet the 1.5 mark. To meet that mark, we need to remove carbon. There is going to be a point where the world actually needs to be negative emissions. Unfortunately, we are still at the beginning of that journey. If I compare of uh, the market, the whole market, the entire amount of carbon credits that were uh, generated last year, it's about 500 million tons. Out of this, removals were about 25, um, 25 million tons. And those removals were mostly forest-based. Only 70,000 tons were in the space of engineered and technical removals. And so the facility here, the point of this facility is to start on a journey where over time we are getting more and more diverse types of removals technologies into the mix. At the moment, removing carbon from the atmosphere is costly. We have figures between 80 and $800 a ton of CO2. You, just a short calculation, if we need 165 gigatons, that's according to IPCC, and you multiply this by $200, you get to a trillion dollar per year that we need to put into removals. So very obviously, we need to bring those technologies down the cost curve. By the way, just a short point, you think that's a lot of money. But let's just keep in mind the global GDP is about 100 trillion. So I talk about a percent of the global GDP. But IPCC also says that the damage climate change could bring, it could cost us 20% of the global GDP. So if you look at it that way, it's actually a cheap deal. <laughs> also, just in brackets, adding the world today still spends $500 billion on fossil fuel subsidies. Just saying. So, 
including direct and indirect? If you, if you include indirect fossil fuel subsidies, it's even higher. So that, I think, hopefully sets the stage a little bit um, for why we need this journey. The special thing about this facility is it's technology agnostic. We do everything we can from biochar, tree planting, but also direct air capture, um, bioenergy, capture and storage, um, enhanced weathering, mineralization, a lot of technologies, anything that removes carbon. Um, the second differentiation of this facility, we are completely science-based. We are going to verify every ton according to standards. In some cases, there is no standard. South Pole and our partners have to write that standard first. Um, but we really are truly of the opinion that this is a very historic day because we have now commitments. This is not a sprint, it's a marathon, it's a long-term journey. While together, we want to crowd in many, many more buyers. We want to crowd in governments. We want to show the world that these technologies f work at scale and that more and more we find support to bring them down the cost curve. So I think with this, I'm handing it back to Isabel. And, and how, many, how many tons are we committing to buy by 2025? So by 2025, uh, the, the target is 1 million tons. That is actually a lot, if you, once again, if you consider that we were at 70,000 tons last year, so... Uh, it's a substantial it's commitment substantial. by our founding buyers. All right, Prince Max, welcome. Um, uh, you, your company, LGT Invest, uh, has set itself the goal of achieving net zero emissions by 2030 uh, in your operations and across all your investments. So how does carbon removal play a role in that? Well, thank you um, uh, for the question, and, and um, uh, thank you for having invited me on, on this panel, and, and really congratulations um, uh, to South Pole for um, having pulled off um, uh, this effort, um, uh, bringing together um, uh, such a diverse group of organizations from different parts of the world um, uh, around this incredibly important effort, I think um, uh, is not easy um, uh, and, um, uh, and deserves an applause from my perspective. And At LGT, we are convinced that um, uh, climate change um, uh, is probably um, uh, the biggest um, uh, global threat, long-term threat um, uh, to well-being of society. And as such, um, uh, we need to really address that challenge um, uh, with a high level of urgency um, uh, that we feel is missing a little bit still, um, uh, and in a very comprehensive um, uh, and hopefully um, uh, smart way. And we all know um, uh, that um, uh, we can win um, uh, the um, uh, climate um, fight um, uh, by um, uh, removing um, uh, carbon dioxide um, uh, from and other greenhouse gases from the atmosphere. Um, uh, and so at LGT, um, uh, we of course um, uh, engage um, uh, by trying to reduce our emissions, um, uh, but um, uh, it will not be enough um, uh, and we need um, uh, to um, also um, uh, engage in removal um, uh, solutions um, uh, and we engage both again um, uh, on the biological or natural um, uh, across natural um, uh, removal strategies um, uh, but the technological ones will hopefully um, uh, prove to be the ones that are most scalable um, uh, and um, uh, will ultimately um, uh, be very decisive um, uh, to win um, uh, climate change and so um, um, uh, we um, invest um, in, um, uh, in sort of across the board. Um, uh, we think that climate change um, uh, is really a, a mega um, uh, challenge that will require, with, which will result in mega trends um, uh, that will change um, uh, the political, um, uh, the economic, um, uh, and the business landscape. We will see industries going down, um, uh, we will see other industries emerge, um, uh, same at the company level, um, uh, and at LGT, um, uh, where we pride ourselves to engage with a long-term perspective, um, uh, we naturally want to engage in this um, incredibly important um, uh, sort of team in a comprehensive way, um, ideally um, engage in a cooperative way, because that's the only way how we will solve it, um, uh, but also engage in a way where we can create value um, 
invest into the new winners, divest the losers, um, and um, hopefully in this broader process, deeply understanding things, and this removal facility will facilitate that, um, uh, because that's why we want to be an anchor investor and close um, uh, to this effort. Um, you know, we, um, uh, we do think that we can create a lot of value um, uh, for our clients, um, uh, who we try to bring in, um, uh, naturally sort of the broader society and the shareholder as well. That's how we sort of broadly yeah. think about the space. Taking, taking a lead as investors. I see that Nancy Gillis has arrived in the room. Big applause for Nancy for making it. And I will, I will happily seed my space. Well, uh, Nancy well Gillis uh, of the First Movers Coalition, please, welcome. Thank you. My sincere apologies, I'm drip drying, so we may not do <laughs> Welcome, thank you so much. Again, I'm so sorry to be delayed. It's doubly embarrassing because I am from the forum and I have to admit it, I got lost. <laughs> so I should have asked one of my colleagues. <laughs> but thank you very much. It's a great honor to be part of this panel, so I really appreciate it. And thank you very much, Isabel, for stepping in. I appreciate that as well. So as mentioned, um, for context, I am the program lead for the First Movers Coalition, and um, we are a program. Did you introduce I ourselves? Or, okay, that might provide some context. Yes. Um, we are a program that was actually initiated in November of last year. We launched at COP26, and really what our program does is we aggregate private sector purchasing power as a means to pull forward technology that's there but not commercially viable at the moment as a way to actually make sure that we're bringing those technologies in sectors that is considered the hard to abate sectors, right? The ones that really are responsible and we're looking at transportation and materials for about 30% of the global GHG emissions. So. As the First Movers Coalition, we launched, as I said, at COP26, we're a partnership between the Forum and the US government, and that's through the Office of the Special Envoy for Climate, Secretary Kerry. And one of the things that uh, we have been doing throughout the years, we've been focusing on a number of sectors, eight in particular. We launched four of them at COP26, and we're launching two of them here at Davos tomorrow. Um, a very big announcement, and uh, which will be increasing the number of companies as well as the number of countries involved in the First Movers Coalition. And one of the reasons I was so excited for the opportunity to be here this evening is because here on the panel are some integral representatives of our interest in the sector that will be launched here at Davos, one of the two, the carbon removal sector. And in particular, we're very gratified for the carbon removal sector. We are focused on a different type of removal, engineered removals. And in particular, for the companies who will be announced tomorrow who have signed up for the sector, what we're really interested in is helping them in this commitment that they're making. They're putting their purchasing power and agreeing to purchase both by volume and by finance a specific amount of carbon removals. And as part of this, we of course want to help them meet those commitments. And the excitement about the carbon removal sector, the one that we're launching tomorrow, is that we have entities such as NextGen here to already help immediately start focusing on helping those companies who are first movers, who've made these commitments, actually start meeting those commitments. So that's why I wanted the opportunity to be here today. And in particular, the reason that we are focused on engineered solutions is for durability reasons, in large part, right? Natural solutions having their limitation, but um, also the scalability of them. So I was excited to be here for the launch. One thing that we love to announce that I think we can already is that South Pole has joined us as an implementing partner in the carbon removal sector uh, for the First Movers Coalition. 
And so we're super excited about that. And of course, uh, we're super excited about the, the companies that are here as well. So again, my apologies. If I'm off steaming, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> But um, one of the things that uh, I wanted to now turn to is um, I believe we've already heard uh, from South Pole the conversation about uh, the importance of carbon removal and hopefully engineered solutions. Okay. Um, I heard the conversation uh, from Prince Maximilian. Thank you very much for that. And now I wanted to turn to uh, uh, Christoph Schweitzer from BCG. Um, and here, I listened, I tried to take a quick note. Don't want to repeat, I assume we mentioned the importance of the IPPC report? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what I wanted to do is ask uh, for the IPPC report, the one that had come out, and, and I want to be very clear as well, I'm here talking about carbon removals, I would be doing a disservice to the First Movers Coalition if I didn't say that the predominant focus of the First Movers Coalition is in abatement, okay? Um, you'll hear this continually uh, when we speak about the program in and of itself. Uh, reduction, reduction, reduction first. Reduction, reduction, reduction. And if you read any of our procurement commitments that the company sign up for, it says that as a preface. Do everything that you can for mitigation first and then, right? But in this instance for, for carbon removals, this is uh, very important. So the question is, IPPC, IPPC came out with the, okay, carbon removals is important because we are doing as much as we can for mitigation, but we need to for what we're facing right now to stay on a 1.5 pathway do reductions. So based on that, I would like to ask, there may be a very big announcement happening with BCG tomorrow on carbon removals. Maybe. Yeah, I think that's Maybe. tomorrow. Maybe. Exactly. <laughs> And so just to whet the appetite, that announcement happening at 11 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, um, let me give you the opportunity, obviously uh, absent our ability to talk about this fantastic activity that your organization is undertaking, how important is carbon removals to both the work that you do, um, but also really just when you look forward to the work that you help others do as well. So your own uh, commitment to sustainability and climate, mitiga uh, climate impact mitigation, but also you work with a number of incredibly powerful organizations, public and private sector. How do you help them as well? So the announcement is for tomorrow, but uh, for now let's just talk about why is this important? And I mean, also why have we as BCG decided to be one of the kind of founding buyers of this next gen facility? I think it's relatively simple. I mean, first of all, I think it's the moment where we collectively need to move from nice statements and commitments to action. And um, look, I do think we need to move. And this is an important signaling moment where leading corporations are coming together and basically say we team with the South Pole and um, we are putting serious money to work, right? And uh, I think it's a, uh, one of these moments that we all collectively need. Yeah? And we come together in Davos very regularly. And it's kind of the week where everyone makes nice statements and then nothing happens. So this is an important <laughs> step, uh, I think, forward. The second thing is um, this is high quality. Nancy, you mentioned it in the introduction, right? I mean, there is a wide array. There's an entire zoo of um, removal opportunities flourishing and now look a priori I think that's great and we need that and we will need uh, incredible amounts of that but I think uh, getting the quality up and you mentioned the uh, durability of some of the technological removal uh, approaches I think it's going to be fundamental and so we believe in the high quality of what is being done here yeah the third thing that we are excited about is I mean it's not about 2040 yeah, we have no more time to lose. And one of the things that uh, we jointly have agreed on is that this is going to be a rapid action, rapid impact type of approach. And uh, we cannot wait till 2035, 2040 to do something. I think it's simply going to be too late. And um, that's uh, the agreement that we have with South Pole, and I'm very excited about that. And then the last thing is... We just need it. Max, you said it perfectly. We can, of course, mitigate, and we need to reduce what we emit, all of us, in everything we do, and we are doing a lot th there as well. But in the end, we will need to remove. 
and um, I think that's uh, necessary to reach our commitments that we have given. I think it's necessary for everyone on this panel to me reach our commitments, and that's what we are doing. So that's our part, right, as BCG. I think then beyond that, obviously, we work uh, with many leading corporations around the world on their own decarbonization strategy, but also now getting it done. Um, and I think it's the same real realization. It's coming from nice commitments and frameworks to getting stuff done and making decarbonization happen. So, uh, I mean, and in pretty much every case, no matter what industry uh, we engage in, you always come to the point of what what is the removal approach? And I think we need to scale those, we need to industrialize those, we need to make them available to a much broader array of people who are committed to it, and I think that's why this is exciting. And um, for us, this is as much our own commitment as it is a signaling to our clients, and very importantly, a signaling also to our staff. I mean, if I had to kind of rank stakeholders uh, at BCG who is most uh, adamant about uh, climate change, it's people, people, people. I mean, it's not that this is all about uh, a commercial opportunity for us, it's about a people opportunity, and I think um, that's why we are here. I really appreciate that answer, and, and particularly the emphasis of, of course, BCG is a member of the First Movers Coalition, so very gratified for that. But I bring up also the fact of the uh, expertise that you share with the organizations that you work with, because we're, we really wouldn't be able to be as successful in the growth that we've been and the launch of the sectors that we've had without BCG also being the knowledge partner for the First Movers Coalition. And so we've benefited from the expertise that you've brought as well, and I wanted to thank you for that. Um, so it is something in which the durability is important, it's engineered solutions, it's commitment, it's everybody making the commitment, it's everybody making the commitment now, it's everybody evidencing that commitment now and the ability to do so through next gen. And that's what we're super excited about. But I wanted to turn to another new member of FMC, incredibly honored and excited. Um, that uh, that will uh, be um, part of the announcement, but again, I don't think I'm, I'm sharing uh, outside of the boundaries. But um, so, uh, Sashimoto, it's a pleasure to be on the stage with you. Um, you represent one of the largest marine shipping companies in the world. Of course, want to reiterate our thanks that you have now become a, a member of the First Movers Coalition. But what we're really excited about is you recently reduced, an, uh, reduced um, redu reductions on my brain. You re recently released a new technology slogan called One Mile Ahead, right? As a way to signify the importance of technological innovation to your own company. Obviously, FMC exists because we understand the importance of bringing solutions that are visible but not yet commercialized forward so that they are available by 2030 as a way to make sure that we're meeting the 2050 goals that we have. Could you talk a little bit about how your emphasis on technology innovation is part of your interest in both carbon removals, but even more largely, just what you're doing in the transportation and shipping sector? Yeah, Nancy, thank you very much. And I'm very, very much honored uh, to be a part of that, this, uh, this quite uh, the challenging project. And very, very glad to be here. So that uh, the, uh, answering your question, it's, it's quite a long story, but uh, the, uh, uh, the basically we are a uh, shipping company and uh, the, uh, operating that about 800 vessels all over the world a huge uh, emission creating the day by day. That is a fact. And so that uh, the, uh, roughly 10, 12 million tons uh, of the uh, CO2 uh, uh, produced by our fleet uh, annually. So we definitely need to reduce that, uh, the, our uh, emission. And we decided that uh, the, uh, to set up our uh, uh, policy that, uh, the, to achieve that net zero until uh, 2050. And then, uh, then uh, we recognize that, uh, that it's a very, very difficult uh, challenge for us. So that uh, we, uh, we are trying to reduce that, uh, the emission by uh, utilizing the existing technologies, quite many different kinds of the technologies, that uh, the easiest uh, the, uh, challenge is that, uh, the, uh, uh, to use that, uh, the, uh, more, more efficient uh, uh, the system and just, just uh, the ecosystem. Then uh, switching the uh, fuel from uh, the uh, oil to more uh, environmentally friendly either fuel like LNG or LPG or methanol or 
biodiesel, etc. Then uh, uh, gradually, gradually, that, that uh, we can uh, we can uh, see that the picture that we, what we are going to achieve. But still, it's very very obvious that we will not achieve zero. That uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, most likely that we can uh, we can uh, achieve the fifty percent reduction. Mm. Not easy, but uh, that it is uh, the, uh, 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 it, it is possible target uh, to reduce our um, emission to fifty percent, and we already committed it to do that. However, that uh, the, uh, to achieve uh, the net zero, uh, we definitely need that uh, the technical breakthrough, and then uh, we uh, we really want to accelerate that uh, the, our uh, investment for the uh, technical side and uh, to try to find that uh, the various new technology. And in addition to that, uh, then uh, uh, still most likely that uh, the ten percent, twenty percent of the uh, uh, emission will remain. Uh, as long as that we will continue our ocean going shipping business. And this is the reason why, the main reason why that, that we decided to be a part of the, this uh, project. And uh, then, uh, since uh, there are so many new technology uh, gathering in this sector, we recognize that after, that, uh, after becoming the member of the First Movers Coalition, and uh, the, uh, then uh, instead of uh, doing uh, the, uh, doing uh, our own efforts uh, alone, it, it's much better to work with the quite many people and uh, the mingling together and exchanging information and try to uh, enhance that uh, the, our uh, efforts. That that that. So, so we we have, we have a quite quite big expectation that that to be a part of that this project, and I really 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 want to uh, uh, also I really want to contribute uh, to something that that to bring something uh, quite uh, new to that uh, the, uh, to this project. That is that. So thank you. Thank you very much for your answer, and and uh, definitely it is being part of something that has representatives from a number of different sectors already, and I think the value in bringing that together so we're able to learn what it looks like to actually have a demand pool um, and bring those new technologies forward that are necessary for decarbonization in those sectors, uh, definitely by 2050, but with the technologies that we need by 2030. Now, we talk about technology, we've heard, I think, about investment, um, we've heard about uh, from another FMC, very valued member, uh, BCG, on um, why you yourself were motivated to join, which is empower, um, uh, empowering and important. But I also now want to turn to Swiss Re, who also has just joined us as well. So welcome in many ways. Very excited about that. And um, I know that your CEO, because we actually just had, I think, the luncheon for this, celebrating this, is a member of the Carbon Removal Climate Action Group that is part of the Alliance of CEO Climate Leaders. And that's the one that we actually celebrated this afternoon. And they actually strongly influenced the formulation, I think, of, of Next Gen and just the thinking behind that. Can you talk a little bit about what was exciting, both in, in those engagements, coming to Next Gen and making Gen, Next Gen happen, but also since this is a celebration for a launch, what is exciting about tonight and this launch activity for you? Thank you, uh, Nancy, and uh, for your kind words. And you know, you mentioned our CEO, but actually um, at Swiss Re, oh. we are 15,000 people uh, committed to, uh, to this cause. Actually, our vision is to make the world, uh, world more resilient, and uh, climate change is obviously one important contribution to that. Uh, so today, obviously, for us, it's a very exciting day to finally see uh, next gen going live. It's a great moment. For us, I guess uh, we have to go back four years when uh, we decided at Swiss Re to get our own operations to net zero by 2030. So we are obviously looking at how we can do that and uh, this brings me back to your reduce, reduce, reduce. That's, that's actually the first actions we looked into and reduce, reduce, reduce for us uh, actually was for example to reduce the CO2 emissions of our travels 
in 2022 uh, to 50% below pre-COVID uh, crisis. So quite a, a strong um, foot uh, uh, forward, I would say, in this respect. We also um, are, have established uh, within Swiss Re a carbon levy. So that's a levy that uh, on every emission that we have as a, as a group, uh, people have to pay $100. And that's going to increase to $200 per ton by 2030. So this year, the, the levy is at 112 uh, US dollars. And this is like uh, uh, money that we collect that we can actually spend on projects uh, like, uh, like this. So direct air capture actually is an interesting one for us because we have looked at what's what's around and for us and I think Renard mentioned it the the challenge is a one trillion ton uh, of co2 removal challenge right and uh, according to our view about 20 percent of that can be resolved through nature-based uh, solutions so we have 80 percent of that one trillion challenge and that one trillion challenge is by the end of the century so uh, it's not much time for such a staggering uh, number um, so we need about 80 percent of it to come from technology so direct air capture is obviously one of those not the only one and uh, Renato you mentioned it uh, but uh, as you know uh, Swiss Re has already invested in a, in a company called uh, Climate uh, Climeworks and we have committed to 10 million over 10 years uh, for carbon removal uh, by this uh, company. So for us, it is critical to bring the costs down. Uh, we think that uh, the green premium is far too high today and therefore totally support Renard's view that by coming together, by creating you know, a coalition from different groups, having some sort of a bias club should actually bring efficiency to, to this game, right? And help us to reduce the, the costs to, uh, in a first step, Renard below $200, I hope, and then hopefully below 100 at some point in, in time. I'm known within uh, Swiss Group to always set the next uh, challenge, but I really appreciate uh, already the first, uh, the first bar being quite a tough one. Um, at Swiss Re, we have uh, also uh, published uh, uh, a publication that was called The Economics of Climate Change. And I think the one thing that I wanted to leave with all of you is that every, so one, the two things. The first is not to act is not an option. I mean, that's, that's very clear. Um, the second thing is every dollar spent today has a net present, a positive net present value. So there's absolutely no regret. Every dollar spent has a net present positive value. So that's absolutely um, crucial to know. So therefore, we are very, very pleased, actually, to now go public. We hope that many other companies will join the, the club next gen uh, that uh, actually um, this will create this virtuous circle around this um, that we actually wish to actually really reduce climate change and uh, also benefit future generations. Great. Thank you so much. And once again, deep appreciation that you've joined the First Movers Coalition. It's, uh, it's really wonderful to have such leading organizations as part of it. Then I wanted to turn to you mentioned, and you closed your comments with uh, economics, right? And it just so happens that we are very lucky as well to have on the panel, Michael, you're coming from UBS. And you are, uh, your organization is a founding signatory of the Net Zero Asset Managers Initiative, powerful force uh, within the finance. And so I was wondering, what brings you to be excited and be here as part of the launch of NextGen? I mean, first of all, um Renault and the entire South Pole team, this is awesome. This is not just important for us here on stage, but this is a clear message to the marketplace, what's possible if some powerful members support this. And um, I tell you, this is the biggest crowd I've seen in the last two days in any events I've been that shows how important this. And the rumor has it, this will be the new Google party going forward Woo! on carbon yeah. removal. And then it's technology too. But, uh, no, but seriously, uh, for us it was really important to get access in investments in high quality technology on carbon removals. 
And don't get me wrong, uh, Nancy, I echo you on that. Our goal is to really decarbonize the entire firm of UBS ASAP. We will have by 2025 a reach scope one and two emission free, the whole firm. So all our operations, that's a big step. But the carbon removal, particularly on technology and new innovations, that's part of the mix for now. But we have definitely bigger ambitions than that. But just, uh, I think we all agree and understand, you know, the transition to a low carbon economy needs massive innovation, massive technology. And this is why this is so interesting to us as, uh, as well, to see what technologies can we support and invest. We have quite some, uh, you know, investments already in other areas of, uh, of not just carbon move, but uh, uh, new technologies uh, to get us there. But this is a very important part for us. And Net Zero Asset Management Initiatives, we have been the founding member in December 2020. And, um, you know, we are making many commitments out there. And sometimes we ask ourselves, okay, how do we achieve that, right? It's easy said and done. But in October last year, we, we announced this commitment, our goals and ambitions. So we will have by 2030, 35% of all our assets invested in asset management, uh, net zero aligned. And that is not an easy undertaking for one of the largest asset managers in the world. There's a lot of passive business. There's a lot of client money, which you can't just say, sorry, client, we do it our way now. There needs a lot of discussions, convictions as well. But if I see what we do in innovation, just on the investment side, the products we can, solutions for clients today, which we thought were unthinkable just 18 months ago, I think that's actually conservative. I think it will be very difficult to sell anything to any client in a transparent way. It's like, oh, this is a net zero line product that's good for you, but here, oh, we didn't do the job here. That's not for you. I think people underestimate innovation in finance tremendously. And just if I see what we innovate every single day with the smartest people on the planet, also with academics and others and partners, we are not the only smart people in the world. It is amazing what we can do for clients. I'll give you an example. Some of the largest asset owners, investors in the world, what we create for them is transparency. So we're talking about trillion dollars of investments. They own percentage of every single company in the world. So, and their company, uh, their countries uh, mostly have ratified Paris, 1.5 degrees. Mm -hmm. They have uh, committed to net zero. And so they have to act. The financial players are a big, big owner of this. The own wealth funds and others. Some big investors out of your country, for example, they did that exercise and they came a $1.6 trillion investor. Comes to like they have a 3.2 degree uh, uh, global glide path on, on uh, global warming, 3.2 degrees. So now the discussion is then, do we understand the risk of those assets versus the 1.5, which we agreed as a country to the world? And that changes the entire discussion with us as a provider, say, okay, the old saying is, are there stranded assets in there? Is evaluation correct? Can we really quantify that risk? And that changes everything. And then you look, OK, where do we invest instead? And that is a very powerful force. And that is the free market, the free capital market to drive this. Mm -hmm. I can tell you what we see. If you are an organization today and you don't have a clear strategy, how we transform a 20th century, century strategy into a 21st century strategy, you have a hard time to get the capital from the free markets to run your businesses. So your cost of capital, we used to talk about it many years ago, it's front and center of every discussion. We ourselves, we committed to net zero last April. 80%, 80% of global GDP committed to net zero. A lot of people might think cynically, 2050, we all, Hopefully at the beach somewhere with a cocktail, I guess, I don't know, or at the Google party then still, at our carbon uh, party. But I can tell you, it is serious stuff. We went to the HM as one of the few banks we had the guts to go to our shareholders in April this year. We was like, okay, whatever you do is wrong anyway. Some people think you don't go far enough. Some people, actually, you are now the green guys here. What are you doing? You're killing our share price, whatever. And we passed it by 77%, which is an excellent, excellent result. First time going in there to our shareholders for a vote. And there are many left and right. They, they don't like what we do, never do, right? But I can tell you, we are committed now. Every and we went for a vote. And every single year now, we have to go back in our climate reports to report our progress we made. This is serious stuff. And why are we doing this? Why are we so crazy to pro free willingly, sure, here, take us apart? Because it gives us a discipline and changes the conversation we have at UBS. 
if you think about 80% of GDP committed to net zero, that means pretty much every client of ours across all segments, on the investing side, lending side, financing side, they are on the same journey as we are. And if we think we can be smarter without doing it and help our clients and drive our business, we are mistaken. And, and just, yeah, and so this is serious stuff, and this changes the conversation because we committed to cut in half pretty much everything by 2030, right? Fossil fuel by 70%, landing and thing, you know, takes always a while to unwind, it's not so simple as, uh, as you would like to have. But the discussion goes then, okay, if we unplug today, that costs us, I just make it up, 300 million revenues. Then discussions like, no way, I have KPIs, I have to deliver, shareholders and everything. Mm -hmm. And then it starts the conversation, okay, what new business could we create, not just to make up the 300, but maybe make 600? And that is innovation. And every new innovation goes in the right direction, I can promise you that. There's not one conversation going like, let's go back to coal, fossil fuel, whatever it is. This is not the case. And that is why it's so powerful. That's why I'm so optimistic. That's why also what you guys are doing is excellent. But that's the power of net zero commitments out there, of the trends. And what I like the most is really the free capital markets are very powerful, and they have spoken. They have spoken in a good way. So there's a lot of hope, I believe. Wow, this is fantastic. So this leaves us with um, one of our last speakers. And I have the pleasure of, in the time that I've been over at the First Movers Coalition, to uh, have experienced his passion and commitment because he gets to work as part of Senator Kerry's office, in actually making the First Movers Coalition a reality. And he is focused day in and day out on how do we make this happen now, right? As you'll hear tomorrow again, um, he's had with the team that has been part of, uh, of his group and uh, over at the State Department, tremendous success. So he's probably going to expect that I ask him something about, well, how has this been working? What's the best thing about what you've been experiencing in the, in the process to date? And he's all geared up. <laughs> so you know that's the time that I get to ask him something that he normally doesn't get asked. And I was thinking, she didn't text me this one. <laughs> so Varun, it's been 10 years. Think back, you were on this stage you were at the launch party of the signal that says, you can do it now. You were joined by a major member of FMC who also has been sharing their extreme knowledge to make FMC real. You have an individual who has a lot of say in what organizations your organization invests in who supports NextGen as well, very exciting. We've got brand new members of FMC who are coming in, different sectors, different approaches, both saying this is the time, we're making the commitment, and we really appreciate having a full group coming together. And then, of course, the power of financing. Now, it's now. So all of this has happened, and it's 10 years later. So you're back at Davos. You, contrary to myself, have found the meeting room on time. <laughs> and now you've been asked to introduce the speakers. Who's on the stage with you? Who needs to be there 10 years from now? Who are we trying to motivate right now? Well, thank you, Nancy. This is, this is really a great crowd. Congrats yeah. to, to you guys and congrats to every company here that's made such an incredible commitment. 10 years from now, my dream is that um, almost every company in the world is capable of making such a pledge and actually meeting it. There's nothing that holds them back, but these are, these are the first movers. Yeah. Um, 10 years from now, actually eight years from now, in 2030, that's what we're talking about. Um, the companies here on the stage will have taken those important steps on the way to the world meeting an important milestone, around 100 million tons of direct air capture removals. That's the kind of scale we're gonna need eight years from now to enable us to get to the gigaton scale, which is really, as we've heard from all the speakers, what we're gonna need by mid-century and beyond. Um, let me back up a moment. Um, lots of terms floating around, next gen, FMC, what does this all mean? Um, 
first of all, what you're doing is, is real climate action. Um, a lot of companies talk about climate action, um, but the few leaders here are taking tangible, concrete steps, putting real dollars behind driving down green premiums. They will have impacts beyond their own companies. As you just mentioned, they'll have impacts on technologies that will be echoed around the world. The next gen facility is a wonderful step forward because it's a buyer's commitment for high quality carbon dioxide removal by 2030. And the First Movers Coalition, think of it as an umbrella. It's an umbrella of buyers clubs. We've got buyers clubs for steel and aluminum and shipping and aviation, and as Nancy mentioned tomorrow, for carbon dioxide removal. And we partner, we love having groups like the Next Gen Facility, groups like South Pole, groups like the Frontier uh, Initiative from Stripe, and other companies who might wanna make a commitment just directly through the First Movers Coalition. We package these all together into a market signal for new technologies of the kind the world has never seen. This is unprecedented across all of these different sectors where technologies today are simply not cost competitive with fossil fuels. But by 2030, we will need those emerging technologies to get to the market so that we can massively scale them up in the 2030s and the 2040s and get to net zero by 2050. So that's what we're all doing here and that's why the First Movers Coalition counts all of these wonderful members uh, who are also part of the next gen CDR facility. Let me just quickly say a couple other words and then I wanna hand it back to you. Um, first, what are governments doing here? Um, I work for Secretary John Kerry in, the, in President Biden's administration. President Biden launched the First Movers Coalition at COP last year on the premise that governments and the private sector need to work hand in hand. That's what the First Movers Coalition is all about. Particularly in the carbon dioxide removal space, governments are so important because we're required to set the market signals to, to basically make it worth private industry's while to invest in something that's so critical, has great social value, uh, but often it's tough to see the private value. Look, I am delighted that UBS, for example, is so forward-leaning that they see extraordinary competitive advantage from the private sector perspective. Not all companies see this. And so governments need to step forward through various instruments, including carbon pricing, tax incentives for carbon dioxide removal, public procurement. There's a range of ways that we can level the playing field and make it worth companies while to not only not pollute, but to take carbon pollution out of the atmosphere and bury it underground for a long time. Um, that, that is an extraordinary activity that the private sector must undertake, but governments need to be right there with them. And it's not just the US government. Tomorrow, you're gonna see a lot of governments joining on to support this first mover coalition uh, initiative. The second thing I'll, I'll just quickly share is, um, I heard the point earlier on, it came from Christoph, came from Renat, that what we can do with carbon dioxide removal technologies, for example, technologies that suck carbon directly out of the atmosphere and bury it deep underground, what we can do with that is to replicate what we've seen with other clean energy technologies. Solar, for example, which has fallen in cost by an order of magnitude, wind, batteries, et cetera. And there really is a potential to do this. Um, there's academic literature that demonstrates that a modular clean technology, that means one that can be mass produced over and over and over again, it's not a single customized installation. Such modular technologies fall in cost predictably the more of them you make. You benefit from economies of scale, the manufacturers benefit from the learning of making this thing over and over again, as they have, for example, with solar panels. Um, in the case of carbon dioxide removal, as we converge on the technologies that could really scale going forward, their costs could predictably fall. It's not magic to be clear. You can't just bet that this will happen. Um, but if there is intelligent investment in that next generation of technologies, and I have every confidence that the companies on this stage are going to invest in those high quality technologies. I'm coming here directly from another conversation in the Congress Center with a series of companies that are doing some of the largest carbon dioxide removal facilities in the world, one in the United States, for example, that'll sequester a million tons of carbon a year or put it into useful products like synthetic jet fuel. So as these companies do these projects, the cost will predictably fall and we'll also have the chance to demonstrate and scale up new and innovative technologies. Today, we have the first generation of those sorbents that can capture a carbon molecule directly from the atmosphere a Herculean task, by the way, because there's less than 1% of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, and then release it into a concentrated stream that you can bury underground. Tomorrow, by 2030, the companies we'll be celebrating will have brought next generation membranes, sorbents, and new processes to the market 
so that we will be able to more efficiently, with less energy and less wasted heat, capture that carbon directly from the atmosphere and bury it for millennia. It's really exciting. We're at the cusp of something where 10 years ago, I don't think we'd have been talking about this, and 10 years from now, we will be talking about carbon dioxide removal first at the 100 million ton scale, then at the gigaton scale. That's what I'm excited about. So congratulations to all of you. Fantastic. So I think, Renee, what, what I can boil that down into is we're having another party and you're going to need a bigger room. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, I want to, uh, again, thank everybody for participating on this. Thanks very much for uh, giving the voice of the excitement, the actual it can be done now viewpoint, which is what's important. And we were told not to hold you off from the merriment, so please, everybody, enjoy this opportunity to really celebrate the here, the now, the doable. Next time.